I think Mac Fisheries was not re just a books and shop. I think it was a chain of shops. If I'm, I might be wrong. But to, I can remember this awful pervading smell of fish, which extended all the way down Spring Gardens. It was. Mr. Charles, as he was uh, fondly known, the, the manager there, he educated us how to approach customers. And if you sit, walked up, a lady or came in and said, can I have, yes, what can I do with love? How can I help you, love? You got dragged over the cold. Good morning, madam. How may I help you? Oh, Miller's Cafe. Everybody met at Miller's Cafe. And it was an everyday thing. You just popped into Miller's for a, and that's where you probably been met and did some movie courting and things like that, you see. It's, you know, it was a general meeting place. It was nice, Miller. It was, it, it was a lovely cafe and it had, um, you were served at the tables and it was the day, in, and certainly in the 70s that you had people in black and white that, you know, that came and served you and the little caps and everything, which is great. Uh, was Miller's Cafe, uh, I remember that being opened uh, Mr. Pollitt, Bill Pollitt opened it and during its life it had several different uh, shop fronts which have appeared in uh, some of the books of Langham and Wells uh, about the history of the period. Uh, always very flamboyant. Right, so Milligan's was quite a posh shop. So, you know, it was all high class. They were top class. Uh, everything but everything was sold in there. But clothes were a speciality for the ladies of books and what have you. It was a what you call a posh posh shop, in other words. It's a very very classy place, rather on the lines of um, are you being served? The chap that actually ch uh, ran the place was uh, Edward Chambers Milligan, a very well respected chap. But he he looked rather like Captain Peacock out of Are You Being Served, and was served the function that Captain Peacock did. Now. I did hear it said years ago, but I don't know if there's any truth in it, that um, there was an unwritten agreement between Marks and Spencer and Woolworths that wherever one situated a store in whatever town, the other one would try and get one near to them as soon as possible. I think I've heard from other people, you know, if Marks and Spencer's desserts boxed and it'll be the end of the world, you know, that would, <laughs> that would, be, that would be terrible. Well, this is the one known as the blood tub, which it lost that name many moons ago. But my dad always used to call it that, and, and a lot of books and people did, because apparently it was a bit of a dive in those days. And um, it was, there was a fight there most weekends, and this is how it got its name, the blood tub. It's got a lead fire seal on the wall at the outside, which was put on by the uh, fire service uh, actually welded onto the wall to show that you'd paid your taxes or your rates and your, if your house, your, your pub were to go up in flames, then they would come and put it out. Well, I remember the smells as much as anything. You used to buy whatever amount of butter you could afford or you wanted, perhaps only a quarter of a pound, but they would cut it off for you and wrap it up and it was very nice the way they packed it. It was like wrapping a parcel, however small. You, you were treated as a very important person in those days. It wasn't sort of take it or leave it. You felt as if, you know, your little, whatever you bought, however small or large, it was very important to the person that was serving you. But it was, it was so nicely laid out. Everything was, you could see everything as you went in, you know. You see all the bacons and the jars and the tins and it was just a very nice shop. You felt very comfortable. Uh, he had rheumatism, Jesse Boot, and he used to come to Buxton and uh, for his rheumatism and he thought, well, Buxton's a growing, expanding town, I ought to have a shop here. And so that's why the Boots, as we see it today, is built. Boots was a very interesting place. They had a cafe upstairs, they had a library upstairs, and it, it was big stationary departments and things downstairs, not just the pharmacy related things as they have now. Very nice shop. You went into the cafe upstairs, it was very nice. Oh, very happy memories. As long as I got my money to go to the Saturday cinema, it was wonderful. And as soon as the film started, there was this 
biggest cheer went up, wasn't there? And I can remember, I don't know if you can, Anne, that if it was full, and it very often was on a Saturday morning, you could sit on the floor, you could sit in the aisles, and you used to shout and shout and shout when the good guys won, and then the bad guys come in again, and it was just wonderful. Then the interval, and everybody ran for an ice cream. Happy. Robert Parker was the manager there at the time. We went in there when Bill Haley and the Comets first started kicking up the uh, American rock and roll. And uh, they, did the f they shot the film there, and it was an absolute riot. Because everybody got up and were dancing in the aisleways, and you get old Bob with his um, attendant on the door. And he'd say, right, you lot, out. I used to go there every Saturday morning to the Saturday morning pictures. And there you could see things like uh, cartoons on Laurel and Hardy and Flash Gordon and all that kind of thing.